It has been four years since the last inauguration, and uh, deja vu, once again, I do have the same scooter, um, and uh, it does, everything old does feel new again, though. Uh, that day was a dream come true. Uh, I don't know, many of you may know or not know that uh, I'm a first generation American. When I was growing up here, you know, going to schools like Desert Cove and Shadow Mountain and Shea, English wasn't even the primary language in my household. Um, but I was, I had an interesting or a strange last name. A lot of people couldn't pronounce it, some people couldn't even spell it. Um, but that never held me back and I'm so proud, I know my mom's so proud that I'm standing to you as our, standing in front of all of you today as our chief law enforcement officer. It's an amazing personal honor, but I wouldn't be here without my family, but especially um, uh, my sisters and my mother. And one thing about my mother, I know we all have our stories, but uh, you know, my mother didn't come to this, this, my mother came to this country about 50 years ago. She didn't speak any English. She was fleeing a uh, dreaded Eastern Europe communistic system. She had the unfortunate, um, unfortunately she had to live through World War II, her village getting, getting attacked. And she didn't speak any English when she came here, but she understood that the United States is and will always be a beacon of freedom and liberty throughout the world, welcoming and opening its arms to those that want to better themselves and to better their family. Our family, our family didn't read about history, we lived history. And I think when that's the case, you have a unique understanding and appreciation for how important um, the Constitution is and how important freedom is. It is a fragile thing at times. But my mother believed through faith and hard work, she might enjoy a better life here in America, not only for herself, but for her children. If you see her this morning, you, you know, she was just up here, you may see a quiet grandmother who still speaks with the accent from which she grew up in. But make no mistake, there is nobody here that is prouder to be in living in Arizona and prouder to be an American. I love you, Mom. And just as previous generations are called to meet the challenges of their times, we are called to do the same. History has shown that a major difference between our government and other governments throughout the world is that we live by the rule of law. Many countries have beautiful written constitutions, but frankly, they don't mean anything. They're just words on paper. If you pull up the Constitution of the Soviet Union, it guaranteed all sorts of rights and privileges. They didn't mean anything. Venezuela had wonderful laws and a wonderful constitution, but it took one man, one person, to undermine that and undermine the liberty and freedom for millions of people. Those documents crumbled because under pressure, they allowed an individual or a dictator or a junta to decide what was best for everybody. And one of the things that we should celebrate in this country is our laws are not just words on paper. Our Constitution has to mean something. And this applies to every individual, regardless of what office they hold in this country. Our founding documents, the Constitution Declaration, recognize the God-given rights and dignity of all of us as human beings. As Attorney General, I'm often asked, what do you do when you're confronted with a difficult issue or problem? And my first question is, what does the law require? Because being Attorney General is enforcing the law as it is, not as you may want it to be. It's about doing everything you can to ensure that everyone plays by the rules, no matter how big or powerful they are in this state or this country. It's about a commitment to truth and justice. And with that mission, I was able to recruit some highly talented people to join me four years ago in the Arizona Attorney General's office. And we hit the ground running, and we sprinted, and we're still doing the same. So whether it's taking on would-be terrorists, foiling con artists who have tried to scam our seniors and the most vulnerable, um, bringing criminals to justice, drug traffickers and human traffickers, we have stood up to preserve Arizona's sovereignty from those who infringe upon it to try to stop skyrocketing tuition costs at our state universities, and all the while returning a nearly record $60 million it, to individual consumers here in Arizona. I'm very proud of that, and I'm proud of our team that's been able to do that for all Arizonans. But today is Inauguration Day, and it's bigger, and it's about more than one person in one office. We need to do everything we can, all of us, not only the audience, but up here on stage to ensure Arizona continues to have a bright future. And those bright future, or that bright future, should be available to us all. 
Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness often involves accessibility to things like a good education. So we must keep our public schools and our public universities within the financial reach of those who seek them. Our Constitution demands it, and we will do everything we can to fight for that. Some other questions I get asked are, what are the greatest challenges facing this state? I don't think there are any challenges we can't overcome, but I believe it's vitally important for all of us, regardless of where we are in the political spectrum, to come and work together as people, as human beings, because after all, we are all on Team Arizona. What started out as stubborn and egotistical gridlock in Washington, D.C. has found its ways into the various states. We see a continued polarization and isolation of individuals across this country. We now have reached a daily, I think quite unbearable, demonization of people that disagree with us. The truth is we've all had individual opinions, loud disagreements, and vigorous debates. All you gotta do is join us for Thanksgiving, and you'll see that. But what, what, is, what we are losing, though, is what Barry Goldwater described and warned us about. We, could, we should be able to disagree without being disagreeable, to listen with an open mind to differing opinions, to be reasonable in our negotiation, and give each other the respect that all of us deserve. To believe in our state and our country, we must also believe in each other. And I am proud to represent all Arizonans as Attorney General, and I will continue to do what the law requires us to do, to hear fairly and to ensure due process in our justice system. But that's just a start, because to truly be great as a state, we must also continue to be equal in the eyes of each other. It has been said that an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. But I would submit to you as equally true as a crime against one is a crime against all. And we must extend opportunities, services, and protections to all of us equally in this state. We must thrive. We must thrive as a state. We must thrive as a state to make sure that the rising tide lifts all of us, even here in the desert. But this is Inauguration Day, and it's about who we are and where we're going. I believe it's time for us to come together, look out for each other as a state, look out for our future, and make sure that we do everything we can to leave this a better state than we found it. Thank you all very much, and may peace and justice be on to you all. Thank you.